Sorry for like gaslighting you and acting like no, you're- No, Phineas, it's That's totally crazy. fine. I'm really not upset. It's fine. <laughs> That's what they'll say about us. Hey, it's your girl, Emily Kerr with iHeartRadio. And today we're talking about the song and music video, What They'll Say About Us. And of course, we have Phineas here. Phineas, so good to see you again. Nice to see you too. Now, Phineas, this is iHeart's Frame by Frame, and we are breaking down the behind the scenes and also deconstructing key moments from your video. And to kick us off, let's set the scene. Gonna ask you a couple questions. Sure. First off, when and where were you when you wrote the song? Um, I wrote What They'll Say About Us um, sitting around, which was what everybody was doing. Um, I wrote a lot of it in June of last year, and then I finished it in July. And it was uh, it was written, I was, I was, the events that inspired it were we're a combination of, of going to protests every day. Uh, mm -hmm. I went to a bunch of George Floyd protests with my girlfriend and my sister. At the same time, I was coming home every night and checking in on Nick Cordero, who was um, hospitalized with COVID. I, I never met Nick Cordero, um, but I'd started following his story through his wife, Amanda. And so that was sort of what was going on. And then I I remember I remember July 5th opening my phone and seeing that he, he had died. And, just being like so floored and overwhelmed by that. And uh, it was like all I could think about. And I remember sitting down and writing what became like the last verse of the song. Wow. I now know Amanda, um, Nick's wife, pretty well. I know um, Amanda and Elvis. Okay. I, I, because I, I was a stranger, like I, I didn't feel comfortable, you know, telling a story that wasn't really mine, especially in the video. And um, and so I, I didn't. I just sort of was like, let's make a let's make something beautiful and, and intimate. And um, that was kind of the direction I gave Sam Bennett. Wow. What was her reaction when you sent her the song? I didn't hear back for a week or two, and I was like so worried that she hated it. I was so nervous. And um, and you know, if she'd hated it, she'd have every right to. Like it's it's her story. It's her life. And when it came out, she. She contacted me and was like very moved by it, and um, you know, very very grateful. And you know, I think I think that it kind of its existence as a result of their journey means a lot to her, and that's you know more than I could have ever hoped for. So the main thing, considering I didn't know her, was like I just wanted to get it right. Didn't want to write a song that wasn't how she had felt, and so if if that's how she felt and it seems that it was that then i feel very grateful phineas that's so powerful and what's interesting is i'm skipping ahead for our production team and the very last thing i had on my frames if we're going to go back to the beginning is the last lyrics if you don't wake up i'll know you tried to i wish you could see him he looks just like you so right. poignant yeah that's the story that's powerful stuff. Wow. Okay, so Phineas, let's dive in. Let's jump to our first frame. We're gonna set the scene here. Now, one thing that our team noticed is you can hear the countdown from the director. Three, two, one. So we have to kick it off with a little shout out to the director of the video, Sam Bennett. Now you've worked together a few times now, right? Yeah, he's my he's my go-to. I love cohesion within videos. As a songwriter and producer, I'm pretty um, controlling. I, I write the song myself, I produce the song myself, I sing it myself. I, I'm in the room mixing it. And with videos, I like to give them as much freedom as possible. It's usually about like sending him the song. He sends me like two or three ideas for a video and I just tell him my favorite and we do that one. Interesting, so this is the part of the process where you can let go. Yeah, exactly. This is the part of the process where I, and I have I have opinions and I, I care yeah. a lot, but I'm also like very willing. Like sometimes in life, like it's a little like, uh, like I like to cook a lot. But, but someone else is a much better cook than me. And so it's like- <laughs> It's a good analogy. I, like I'm happy to make some food for myself, but if someone's like amazing, I, I'm like, And go they're gonna for serve it, it like, for you? Let Why me, not? How can I help you? How can I help? So with videos, I treat it the exact same way. I, I, you know, Sam's gonna direct a better video than I would. So I'm, I'm lucky that he's doing it for me. How did you and Sam first meet? He heard my song, Break My Heart Again. And I think he just had a great idea for it. It's like, I have a great idea. And that was the song that was already a year old at the time. And I was like, sure, I'd love to make a video for that song. Yeah. And he crushed it, just made an amazing video. And then we did the music video for a song called I Lost a Friend, which I, that's like one of my favorite videos ever. I love that one. And then we did Shelter. And then the last COVID uh, free video was Let's Fall in Love for the Night, which is like me and a bunch of dancers on a roof. And so this this video in many ways is a real COVID-y video. It's, it's just me. COVID. Um, 
but I just I love I love the way he thinks and I sometimes like you can read a really good treatment for a music video and you can get there and it could be a great shoot but just like the the way it turns out like the camera setup or like the cinematography is just not where it where I want it to be and with him I I'm so confident that his video is going to turn out great always that I, I just have so much trust in him. Take me back to the set day. Was this all shot in one day? Oh yeah, I mean it was it's one take, so it was shot in The whole um, thing is one take? Yeah, I mean we I thought we you did would a bunch hit some jump takes. cuts in there. We did a bunch of takes, but we used uh, one take. I think we used like the last or the second to last take, I think. They had two days and the first day was all set up and testing. Um like, you know, camera testing with with the stand in for me and everything. And then I came in on the second day and watched all of the footage to know exactly what was going to happen. And uh, I'm so glad they had that that setup day because they obviously did such a good job. And I think, you know, they probably were able to do that because they had all this time to prep. Now, how many takes did you end up doing on set? I don't know. I, I know it was like under 10. I, I'm also wearing uh, shorts, I'm wearing like a bathing suit under my blazer. So That's the quarantine it's, outfit. It's like <laughs> nice yeah, on top. I was like, like a bathing suit and flip flops <laughs> under uh, a blazer. I love it. Um, now let's jump ahead. I like this one a ton, Phineas, because I like your mood swing here, where you're mm -hmm. somber, you're very chill, and then all of a sudden we start seeing like you get a little happier, we have a little smirk in there. And mm -hmm. I thought this was so impressive because it was like a lot of emotional cues you had to hit. And now knowing it's one take, I feel like even more impressive. What was that like for you on set, again, rehearsing this and knowing that you're getting it right, specifically because you had one shot at it? It's challenging. The, the one take, I, I almost all of my music videos are one take. Um, I like that it feels like a high wire act because as an audience member, you feel very connected. There's no, there's, I, I get very disconnected from videos where there's a bunch of cut-ins. Um, and so I, I like doing everything as, in as few takes as possible. And it can make it really challenging because you can get a 95% perfect take and then screw up in the last 5% and, and the whole thing's kind of worthless. So it, it is a challenge for sure. For you on our next frame, I wanna go back to logistics for a second. This rotating apparatus, what was going yeah. on here? Were you the one moving or were they moving around you? It was me and a camera across from each other on a spinning um, device. We were both spinning. And so- Were you dizzy? So I think because because we weren't at the at the um, center of it, it was it was much easier. I think had I had I just been rotating, you know, like I, like you, you know, I, I was spinning around, it would have been horrible. But because we were doing a kind of a wide rotation, and I was looking at a camera that also wasn't moving, so I think it was all pretty helpful. I also love these shots when you're singing directly to camera and you're like really singing your heart out. Are you actually singing on set? I am. I'm actually singing because I think if you're not singing, it doesn't look the same in the throat. It doesn't, you can't see the engagement as much. So are you like, like the, belting just, it out in these moments? I am, really yeah, yeah. It. And I actually have to have the audio pretty loud because otherwise I can't hear my, I can't hear what I'm, you know, singing to over me singing in the room super loud. By the end of the day, are you over the song or are you like, I still like it? Oh no, I'm so over it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. Um, let's jump ahead to our next frame. One thing I've always loved about your videos and noticed is I feel like you have such attention to detail and colors. Yeah. I like where it lines up here with the lyrics. And I'm curious if you did that on purpose, matching your lyrics with the lighting at the time. I, I'm sure Sam did. Um, I, I definitely gave him like the entire backstory of it. To me, to me, in terms of delegation, I do the same thing with like my visual artist or choreographers. I give them as much information about why I made what I made for them to to work with, right? So this is what I wrote this about. This is why I say this word. This is what happens here. So that they have this real sense of deeper understanding to work with. Um, but yeah, I love that too. I love that it goes from this kind of vibrant red, to this like really melancholy yeah. blue. The line too that it lines up with is, if I say a cliche, it's because I mean it. <laughs> I'm curious what cliche that you were talking about here. Well, the chorus is uh, we have the time to take the world and make it better than it ever was, which is like a, a very optimistic thing to say and didn't feel particularly achievable during this summer of like real conflict and, you know, so many people losing loved ones. I thought if, if I'm if I'm if I'm to be optimistic about this, it's an opportunity for change, right? It's an opportunity for us to re-examine our world. And so 
you know, I think singing about changing the world is is uh, a little cliche, but to me, it, uh, that that line is, is if I'm if I'm saying it, it's because it's how I feel. It's because it's how it's what I mean. All right, let's jump to our next frame. You kind of touched on this already, but what was so impressive too is the timing and choreography of everything that we see going on. You're yeah. spinning. There's lights. There's confetti. We haven't gotten to the water yet, but there's a lot. So, what went into the prep for this, and how did you get all the chore like the choreography right and all the cues right? There was like maybe one, oh, you know what the one like glitch was, was we, we had like this kind of like fake shower head situation, but it was actually a, a tube, like a garden hose tube with slits cut in it so that it would come out through the, and it would rain. When it would turn off and then we'd reset, sometimes it'd be like drippy. But other than that, it was very, it was very uh, seamless, very glitch free. Was it tough for you to learn the cues on set? I, I was just singing the song. I mean, I was, you know, they would, I think they'd shout like feathers or something like they'd shout cues like that. And I, uh, so I'd have a little psychological prep, but I wasn't, I wasn't getting Nickelodeon slime. Like it wasn't, uh, it wasn't gross. So I, in, uh, in my mind, the water was stressful for me. Let's jump to our next one because truly I was, if I had my hair done and I got water on it, I'd be stressed. So again, getting this shot right. How did you go about it? Was it nerve wracking knowing? Because I'm sure it's a lot to reset this after. It was a lot to reset. It was a lot of, yeah, there was definitely a lot to reset. So I, I definitely was like, better not forget the lyrics of chorus too. Like that would be a huge drag. I'm not much of an actor. And so with music videos, the more I can react to, the, the less I have to imagine, mm. right? So getting rained on, it's like, takes a lot of work off my shoulders. I can just react to the feeling of, of getting hit with water and you know, what, whatever that makes me feel. It's, I can be very reactive, which is, appealing to me. Next one we have to talk about is these sparklers. Are you protected from these sparklers because they look super close to you? <laughs> They're not that Was close. This I, really? I love the way they came out, but they they were they were not close. Uh, somehow they were they were happening not close to me. I don't know. It looks like they could come in front of my face. Like they look right right there, but they're not. I don't know. Interesting. Let's jump ahead to one more another frame. This is probably my favorite moment in the video and why I like this one so much is because it's the first time that we actually see you break away from the camera. And this is the instrumental part. So I'm curious for you why that was the important moment where you wanted to break away and why you wanted to do that. I felt like the connection was kind of, that's a sad line. I used to think the pain would fade and it never does. And it's a, I, I thought it was sort of corny to just kind of continue to stare directly into the camera and I like the idea of kind of severing the connection and just kind of getting lost in my own um, thinking of it so and then it sort of allowed this this next moment to happen which was like sort of pulling back to frame and now the guitar riff here is super soothing did you play this and what guitar oh yeah did I you played everything I played it. it's, what a, guitar it's, was this? it's piano and um and uh it's piano there's no guitar no there's I don't think there's any guitar on the song oh really yeah. I'm obviously a musician. Um, oh, you know what? I'm so sorry. You're completely right. There's guitar right here. I, I, no, I, uh, Phineas, don't embarrass me on my own Zoom. Of, I was thinking of the, uh, <laughs> that like main, like, dee -dee 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 -dee. I was thinking of the piano part, but you're completely right. The, the, <laughs> that bridge part has that guitar line. Yeah, I'm, I am a, a very mediocre guitarist. And, uh, and so it's, I try to do melody over, um, skill because I don't have much skill. Um, but I thought it was pretty and I thought it needed something. Thanks for catching that. I would have completely forgotten <laughs> that I had guitar there. Sorry for, hey, Phineas, sorry that, for that's acting, what we're here for. sorry for like gaslighting you and acting like no, you're No, Phineas, it's that's totally crazy. fine. I'm really not upset. It's fine. <laughs> um, no, we have one more for you. Our last shot. Let's talk about this paint moment because we couldn't decide if it was confetti, if it was the lighting, but why did you want to include this paint part? Like when you have these one take videos, do you have the chance to to sort of play with a lot of like objects because you don't need to reset until you do like the next one. And I've, I've always loved videos like that, like, okay, go. And I just thought, you know, if there's any sort of like subtext to this video, it's like, it's like going through it, right? It's like you go through the rain and you go through this like storm of like, you know, particles and, and powder and feathers and everything. And I just wanted it to be this kind of like this storm that you have to weather, which is like what everybody did last year. So that was, that was how I interpret it. Maybe Sam has a different wow. interpretation, but that's definitely like what I was thinking as it was happening. It was like, look at all this. Yeah. Look, at, it was like a, 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 a sort of an art installation example of like weathering a storm. Oh, interesting. Okay, I like yeah. that analogy. Before we let you go, this year, 2021, what else can we look forward to from you? 
I'm putting on an album this year. I can't well, that's quite go. say, uh, you know how it is. I can't drop more than that, but I, my album's done and I'm putting it out this year and I'm so excited about it. I'm really proud of it. But we can't wait for that. And you know, now I'm in New York and things are opening up. So I'm feeling super hopeful and I'm also vaccinated. Have you been vaccinated? Well, yeah. I am vaccinated and I, I'm, I'm hoping to plan a trip to New York in the near future. What are you most looking forward to in a vaccinated world when we're all free and out and about? Well, on a personal selfish level, playing shows is gonna feel amazing. And then on a, you know, like a fantasy of mine, like I've wanted to see a play or a musical for a year straight. So I'm really excited to come do that. And I also just miss like sitting in coffee shops a lot. I, I'm a, Ooh, I'm a, really? yeah, I love, especially like when we're on tour and you're in Montreal or you're in, you know, New York or, or uh, you know, really anywhere. There's there's a great coffee shop to be found in every city. And I love mm. finding it and sitting there and putting headphones in and listening to some music or just listening to the ambiance of the actual cafe. When you think about performing live, what do you miss most? If you can pinpoint one thing. I miss seeing the impact of music on the listeners. I think I miss that connection of just like looking down and seeing kids experience it. Cause I, you know, I've, I've been going to see live music since I was a young teen and one of the, one of the joys of my life. So getting to see kids experience what I've experienced, it's like nothing better. Phineas, this is so fun. Thank you so Great much for you, being Emily. here again. So good to see you. Thanks so much for watching our Frame by Frame with Phineas for his video, What They'll Say About Us. Make sure you stream the music video and listen to all his music on iHeartRadio. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here. And don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. Bye guys.